So we got a uh, we got a real Chinese millennia. I don't mean about myself, but but Gordon, and we also got a pioneer into the Chinese market. I don't mean your age. Um, we got um, Tony, who can speak five different languages. Um, later, we're gonna have to try to ask you. Um, we also got a fortune teller. So um, please. All our audience, please join me again to give them really great thanks applause to our panelists. Thank you. Thank you for sharing your experience, your data, and your, also your knowledge with all of us. So in the meanwhile, I want to remind you that you can already start using the Slido to ask questions. So you can already submit while you are listening to um, our panel discussion. Um, Probably I would give this uh, first question to um, to Tony, um, Wang Xiansheng. It would be very interesting, I guess, for our audience, especially many of our audience here uh, are coming from um, around Europe, from also UK. Um, so they probably want to know, as tourism service supplier, how does Huayuan? For example, sign a contract with them? Do you concern whether they are big company or small company? Does size matter? Oh, and also um, some practic practical suggestion that you want to give to them as supplier, because you are in charge of sourcing all these uh, resources. Well, we, we welcome for all the resource. Yeah. Those uh, you have specified highlight, you have those uh, match what uh, our clients or our China market needed, we are very welcome. Because uh, we need to upgrade things as well, I mean, for our program at this stage. That's why we welcome for all the business partners who, who really, I mean, who wanted to work with China, who, who wanted to get in China, we, we are welcome. Because we can negotiate. Yeah. Thank you. Um, this, so that is actually quite encouraging, I guess, uh, for many of the audience sitting here. Um, again, I think um, 这个问题我用汉语来问, uh, 因为这个问题是十问这个十问高等的。作为穷游, 我也很明白为什么我的帖子在看不见了那但是的话呢 OK,我这边的话会先简单的跟大家介绍一下穷游用户在穷游上是怎么样子的一个用户习惯。首先,用户通过穷游会获取旅行的灵感,来帮助他们做旅行的计划。有了旅行计划之后,穷游提供穷游
Thank you very much. Um, this, so, you, so what just now, Gordon, have given you some tips about how to, how to be seen by Chinese customers. You have a lot of information. Lawrence, your company has also so much information. So um, can you look through your crystal ball and tell us, do you, is there any pattern that you can already see now towards the Christmas booking? Or let's say, um, if this one you don't have that at this moment, because I, I believe you need to really look into the computer, you can also actually um, tell us how tourism industry here in Europe can use your data to change their way, change, make strategic decision. Probably this is the way just in general how the data, your data would change the way of people doing the business. Thanks very much. That's a, that's a great question. <laughs> a difficult one to answer. Just that, you know, it's not about looking into a crystal ball. It's about finding out, you know, what, what, what patterns can we already see that, that, that predict at least for where we are today uh, how, for example, Chinese New Year is already uh, developing. And uh, I had a look on that just before this presentation. We are uh, seeing a 40% plus in bookings ahead for Chinese New Year compared to the same period last year, exactly the same moment. That's a very encouraging number. That doesn't mean that we'll be 40% more uh, outbound Chinese travelers uh, going to places, it just means that already 40% more Chinese decided right now already to make and confirm their booking for Chinese New Year. So how many, many come to Europe? Um, I, I have not looked specifically on the European side, but uh, I showed you the data as is, uh, so uh, you could see on which uh, European destinations are, are uh, seeing a, a larger uptake in bookings compared to last year. We just always need to have uh, you know, uh, uh, a contextual uh, message to that. Um, you know, we had in Western Europe uh, a few difficult years as well with a, with a great number of, of events that happened that really changed a lot on the, um, the way that specifically as well the Chinese travelers have been visiting places. Now, so for some of these destinations, specifically uh, Benelux, specifically France as well as Italy, um, they were um, uh, more hit by this than uh, surrounding uh, destinations around that. So we see a recap coming back again. But, you know, as we discuss, uh, it's incredibly important to keep a constant view on um, how Chinese travelers are reacting to things that unfortunately uh, 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 keep happening and, and is more as a constant just that the good thing on this is that Chinese travelers do not, are not deferred by not traveling, they continue their travels. They're, they're not canceling it, they do modify it, they change other destinations, uh, but we can clearly see that they're not canceling uh, their trips when, when things uh, go wrong or <laughs> events are happening. That sounds good, good news for everyone. Thank you very much for uh, that. Miko, do you know why I, why I leave you to the last um, to ask you a question? You have been in Chinese market for many years. You know what does uh, perseverance and also endurance in the market and long-term commitment mean. That's why I leave you to the lucky last. Um, so this question um, is, I remember you mentioned actually, uh, you said thin air, in flight, you'd have the innovation and also you try to catch up with the Chinese market trend. So you have the Alipay uh, in-flight service. So that means Chinese travelers can buy things through the online, um, online payment way already in your flight. So this question, actually I wanted to ask you, do you have this um, Alipay? Um, have you already seen any strong growth of spending since the finger have this in-flight um, payment method? Or is that more or a gesture to show the Chinese uh, customers that you understand the market, you respect the way of doing that? Yeah, that's a really good question. I mean, if we can keep it secret, and I think I mentioned already, but after we did put Alipay and, and we did create the Alipay solution on our, on, our, on our flights from China into Helsinki, the actual onboard sales on these flights tripled. 
So, so, so in, in that sense, it did bring in, in, in greater revenues, but I think that's a great point that you made, that, that, that the gesture that, that just making the Chinese passenger comfortable on board our flights with payment methods that they are used to in their daily lives is something that hopefully makes them more comfortable also with Finnair. So, I mean, you know, there are many, many different reasons why, why we did really go for the Alipay, and, and, and uh, we're extremely happy that, that it is something that has brought multiple benefits in regards to Finnair. Thank you very much for that. Um, I don't want to occupy all the time from the panelists because I know that our audience also have questions. You probably have some very burning questions you need to ask. So, um, Professor Out, um, can I invite you again to this um, stage because you are the expert with all this, um, the slide of the question and everything. We can actually have a look on the, on the screen. Okay, so uh, first of all, also from my side, thank you for this for very, very interesting presentations. So, and also thank you to the audience. Obviously, you're all tech savvy. You all know how to use uh, your smartphone. So, uh, we got a lot of questions, I think 50, 60. If you look at a smartphone, you can see all of them. But these are the three questions which have which got the biggest uh, likes. You see uh, 22 likes for Visa is impacting the growth for Chinese travelers. Uh, will it change? So Visa, obviously a big, big topic. Number two, uh, 20 likes. In which way are the, uh, oops, now, oh, just we, we got the UK is going up. In which way are the UK involved in the EU China tourism year considering the current political Situation. There comes the B word. Uh, and the third one, uh, experience driven is the current buzzword when it comes to travel trends in the Chinese up and market. What does that actually mean? So I think these are three questions which uh, I can say from our work uh, in Kotri, we are encountering all the time. And I think the, so Minyan, you decide or the, or the panel decides who wants to answer it. And then we have to see if we still have time to take maybe one direct question from the audience, or we do this, or we go directly to the coffee break. Um, well, um, I actually um, would like to invite, um, of course, we follow what is here, uh, demand, we follow the demand, um, just as all the good suppliers. Um, so, of course, the first question about the UK involved in EU-China tourism year. Can I invite uh, Mr. Tanini from uh, European Commission again onto the stage? Would you like to actually join our panelists also to answer this question? Thank you. Uh, so as far as the first question is concerned, I can say that uh, at present the uh, UK is fully involved in the UK in the EU China tourism year. Uh, of course, uh, uh, you know that the negotiations are going on, but uh, I think that uh, uh, by the end of 2018, uh, nothing will change, so um, UK is fully on board and uh, all the operators could be part of our initiatives. Uh, and uh, as far as the visa issue, is, it's, uh, this is a major political issue. It's uh, on the top of the agenda of the Council of the European Union. Uh, negotiations are going on. Uh, and during 2018, uh, um, there will be um, four rounds uh, of negotiations. Uh, we really hope that the EU-China Tourism Year uh, could, uh, let's say, give a boost to the political negotiations and uh, uh, to show that uh, this, uh, this is a major issue to improve uh, the, the, the tourism sector in Europe. Thank you very much. Thanks uh, for coming to our stage again. And here we actually um, have this experience driven. What does that mean for the Chinese um, customers? Um, does any panelists would like to answer this question? Yep, Nico. Um, I can easily take the experience and, and, and talk about Finland and what that has brought. Uh, it's in, in Finland, you know, you can purchase, but what does that experience mean? Finland is, is pretty much packaged around the experience. You have the aurora, so, so the, seeing the aurora borealis, and, and, and what does that mean? You have the nature, that's what we build a lot of the actual tour packages around, what you can do in the nature, be it summer, winter, fall, or spring. So having, being creative, I think that's what the experience does. And what's important in regards to that experience is the picture. Even for myself, when I'm in China, I love taking that perfect picture and sending it back to friends, family, colleagues, and, and, and neighbors in regards to, hey, this is where I am. Same applies for the Chinese. What are the perfect picture places to kind of capture that experience and, 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 and take that home to the, to the friends and families and so on? So, so uh, 
will it change? I think this is important that if your product is experience driven, you have to be able to continuously develop what those experiences are. If you sit back and, and, and enjoy seeing Chinese come, then in two years you'll be out of the picture, that, that you truly have to really, really challenge yourself in regards to, okay, what's that next experience that I want to offer the Chinese traveler or whoever else is interested in that, in that experience travel. So continuous development is something that I, 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 I truly strive for. Thank you. Um, Gordon. 作为穷游的话呢，你们有很多很多的，就是说这个中国消费者、中国的潜在的游客在网上的话呢，会讲他们的追求体、追求体验的这种形式。那么刚才这个问题就是问这个中国游客对这种体追求体验到底是怎么样
I would still ask you your, uh, for the last comment about the visa because you had a very interesting uh, the visa um, slide in your, in, your, in your presentation. Because there's one question related to the, the growth of Chinese traveler. It asks, will it change? Um, again, ask you about the future. Do you think you would have any uh, more comment about it? Good question again. Will it change? Well, will it change in, in what respect? I think we will continue to see new destinations that we have not really heard of so far as a preferred place for Chinese to travel to that will be able to drive a lot, a lot of incoming Chinese into the destination if they easen it up. What the whole picture said about the impact of visas is that it is such a barrier relief for apparently Chinese travelers that you know it's a great opportunity for Europe, for any selective country in Europe to ensure that that hassle is, 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 is gone uh, to really fuel up uh, the, the appetite of, of Chinese tourists. Yep. Thank you very much, and uh, thank you very much for all the panelists, and thank you for everyone sitting here for quite a bit while to enjoy all the knowledge and also all the data, all the, all the information. Now please um, join us for some nice tea and biscuits, hopefully, um, and have a break. We will come back at the time of um, 3.50, please. Thank you.